Welcome to what will be the last tutorial for OCRGC Computer Science. Uh, there's no fancy slide this time because we're essentially down to the home stretch and there's just a few techniques that I want to cover. Um, those are going to be um, SQL, um, functions, and also uh, looking lastly at Boolean statements, uh, logic gates as well. So let's get to it. So what we have here, we're looking at um, a table, um, a couple of tables actually, and we're being asked to identify, first of all, a bit of shaky camera work to start off with, um, the foreign key in songs. Now, a foreign key um, is generally what we call, well, it's going to be a primary key in another table. So in our artist table, we can see that the primary key is artist ID. So this is a foreign key, yeah? Artist ID. The reason why that is a foreign key is because it's a primary key in another table and it creates a one-to-many relationship from here. You've got one here and you've got many here um, in the songs table. Why is it a one-to-many relationship and how is that link created? Well, because each artist can only appear once. Whereas what you can see here is that each artist can write several songs. So say, for example, Stefan Don, she's got two um, tracks here, 16 Shots and Envious. So she could have loads of tracks in here, but she can only appear once in the artist table. Why is a foreign key necessary? Well, I've kind of answered that question just then, haven't I? The foreign key is necessary um, because it creates a relationship, a one-to-many relationship between the artist table and the songs table. One mark. And the second mark is for saying that this reduces redundancy and ensures that any changes made to um, one table are automatically updated in the others. Okay, now let's have a look at this then. So here... Oh. Fold up. Right, so what is the output for the following SQL? Select track ID, track name and rating from songs. I need track ID, track name and rating from songs where the rating is greater than 3.1. So therefore, I need this song this song, but I'm outputting the track ID first. So I'm putting down 002, track name, hangman, rating 4.0. Then I'm outputting this as well. So 004, envious, 3.8. Okay, state the data types for the following fields. Um, so we talked about data types earlier. Um, in terms of these data types, then, we've got... Oh, just again, let's just cover this up. I'll do that by folding. Mr. Lau, you're making a mess. It's good that the production quality isn't exactly on point here, is it? Right, okay. So, track ID, this is a string. Although it's got numbers in it, integers cannot start with a zero, so therefore it's a string. Artist ID is a mixture of characters and numbers, so it's also a string. Track name is also a string, and a rating, uh, because it's um, got a decimal in it, I would say it's a real, okay? The next um, question then says, um, describe a validation check we could perform on rating. So what I would say is the name of it is what I'd say it's got to be a range check. So for one mark, a range check. And then to describe it, I would say um, to check that rating 
is more than or equal to zero and less than or equal to five, assuming that the ratings here are out of five, yeah? So we do a range check. The only other types of checks that you really need to know about are presence check. Presence check um, essentially says, um, is the field empty? Is something present there? Um, and you could also have a length check, but length check you can only really do on strings. Write the SQL to return the following. So I need to get SD001, which is um, the artist ID, and also 16 shots. So effectively, I'm selecting from the songs table. So I'm going to say, I'm going to put that somewhere where I can see it. More folding. I probably think I'm making a paper plane here. Right. So, how are we going to um, get SD001? So, first of all, I would just write select from and where. Those are our statements. And we're selecting two fields. We're selecting artist ID, comma, never write and because and is a logical operator, track name from songs, that's the name of the table, where, and I would just say track name equals one equal sign because there's no such thing as two equal signs in SQL, 16 shots. You could put a semicolon at the end, not really necessary. Okay, next then, let's have a look at um, arrays. We're going to go back to this here, and we're going to look at functions in particular. So, functions, sometimes people get a bit confused um, when we talk about functions. Actually, Essentially, it's just a procedure that returns a value, um, and it actually gives you the name. So let's give it a name. All we're doing here is we pass in a, a word as an argument, such as add, average, or lowest, and then it will perform that calculation. So here, for example, um, we'll def define the function, or you could write function. So we'll def do this. Just sharpen this pencil because it's a bit blunt. So def do this and um, we're passing in either add average or lowest and then give a relevant output. So let's just call it um, operator or operation maybe. Okay. And then we just need to say if add average or lowest. So let's start with if here. It's not indent too far because otherwise we're going to go off the page. So we can say if operation equals add, then we need to add up all the numbers together. So we're going to need to do a for loop on that and add them all up. So we'll do total equals zero to start with. And then we'll say for count equals, you can either put 0 to 5, or for count in range 0, 6, or you can say um, for count equals um, num.length, but we'll just say for count equals 0 to 5, that's all the items in the array, um, total equals num count plus total, or you can say total equals total plus num count. And then at the end of that, we can say print um, total is concatenate in total. Yeah, that's the first bit. Now, let's just move it on a bit. Let's just move that up and out of the way. We then need to do um, the average. So, L if or else if. You can put else if, 
or Elif if you're writing Python. Else if uh, operation equals average, then we'll say um, total equals zero. And this time, we're just doing exactly the same, but we're dividing by the number of values we've got. So we can say the count equals 0 to 5, total equals num count plus total, and then the average, which is outside the loop, is equal to the total divided by, and there's six values in there. Okay, um, the key thing here is actually it says the function should return the relevant output. So actually, we should never, if, if they ask for return, then we don't print. We use that keyword return. So just to scoot back here, we need to return total. Likewise here, we're going to return average. And then we'll do else if lowest. Else if operation equals lowest. And we're using our answer from last time, which for those of you that remember, we need our Boolean flag, yeah? So we'll say that um, lowest is equal to num zero and then we're going to for loop through it so for count equals zero to five if num count is less than lowest then the lowest is equal to num count and then when we finished oops when we finished um, our for loop, we can then return lowest. We're just going to do an else, just in case they write anything but add average and lowest. So we'll just say else. If they write anything else, we can just return um, error. Yeah. So that would be um, how we would write a function which returns a value. This is quite an extensive one because I wanted just to showcase all the different skills that are required um, and that would be everything. Okay, um, I think actually we're gonna, well actually we'll cover one more thing. I know the bell's gonna go and I've got seven minutes. So I've got seven minutes to get through um, this. Some of you will have seen this before, um, but the key thing is, is being able to read the notation from Boolean um, to, I guess, the logic circuit. So this is Z equals not A. That hat symbol means and. Just remember, it looks, the hat looks like an A, just without the bar. Yeah, so not A and B. So what's going on here is we get A, and we put it through a NOT gate. We get B, and we just do an AND gate there. Yeah? And then the output is Z. Yeah? Working out what should go in, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. That's just us counting in binary. In order to get a 1 in Z, I need 1 here and 1 here. For that to work, for this to be 1, A needs to be 0. B needs to be 1. So 0, 1 gives us 1. All of the times it's going to be off. Here, it's going to be A or B and not C. In other examples, they sometimes put apostrophe C, sometimes put a C with a bar over the top for not. But this is how we're going to write it. So let's do the A or B first. So we'll do, oh, let me... Before I forget, let's write the word and there, just so the examiner knows what gate it is. A, B, this is going to go into an OR gate. We'll write it as OR so they know. 
and then we're going to and that with the knot of C. So C goes into a knot gate, and that is going to go into an and gate. Yeah, and that is P. Okay, so once again, in order to get one there, I need one here and one here. In order to get that to a one, I need a zero there. So I know that if C is ever one, that goes to zero, this goes to zero. So anytime that C is one, you can just write in a zero straight away. Then I need any time that A or B is on, it's going to be one. So there it's not going to be on. Um, there it's on because B is on. Here it's on because A is on. Here it's on as well. Okay, next one. You might want to pause first. Um, we'll go A and not B or C. So what's happening here is A goes straight into the not of B or C. So let's do B or C first. So uh, B, C, that goes into an OR gate. And that is knotted. And that goes into the A into an AND gate. Okay? Okay. Once again, to get one there, A has to be one, that has to be one, which means this has to be zero. So that means that if we were to fill that out, zero, 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 zero one, ten, eleven, hundred. 101, 110, shout out 110, 111, right, so here then, A has to be 1 for it to work, and this has to evaluate to 0, so the only time that's going to work is when A is 1 and the other two are 0, there, any other time it's going to be off, so any time A is 0, obviously it's off, so there it's off, and any time that we've got a 1 coming through here, it's going to be off as well. Yeah? And that is it. I hope that's been useful. Um, that's the last of the tutorials. I think we've covered most of the difficult um, content. I suppose if there is something which um, you want me to go over that isn't covered in those um, four videos, um, you could either... Um, comment on the video below um, if I get time I might make another tutorial um, or you can just see me you know you'll see me in school you can email me whichever okay it's been an absolute pleasure teaching you guys um, it's, it's going to be uh, emotional I think let me just turn this around yeah so that you you get this um, yeah it's going to be it's going to be really emotional when you leave um, I've been really happy teaching you guys um, over the last year um, and I think we're going to get really good results. So uh, We've had a good year. People have been working hard um, most of the year. Um, remember, don't make excuses. Don't get caught on the net. Make sure you do the job properly. Um, and that's it. Best wishes to you all.